Hi everybody, welcome. My name is Ashley, and one of the things I love to do on this channel is a series called Houseplant Care 101, and today's episode is going to be all about a care guide for Hoyas, everything you need to know in mere minutes that will help set you up for success when it comes to caring for your Hoyas. This Houseplant Care 101 series is sponsored by RepotMe.com. With RepotMe, you can have all of your houseplant supplies delivered right to your door. They are a one-stop shop for all of your houseplant, orchid, or succulent needs. They have custom handmade houseplant soils ranging from orchid soil, philodendron, monstera, peace lilies, cacti, succulents, and more. They also have lots of different pots, including my favorite clear slotted orchid pots that I cannot live without, amazing houseplant fertilizers, and so much more. I have included their link in my description below for you, and you can also get 10% off any potting soil with my code Ashley. Now Hoyas have become enormously popular in the houseplant market, um, justifiably so. They are absolutely beautiful and very, very easy care. They're some of the first plants that I got into personally when I first started collecting and becoming interested in tropical houseplants. And at first I was a little intimidated, but there is no need to be intimidated with these plants because they are, as I mentioned, incredibly easy care and they are just a delight. Now there are over like 500 different species and, and varieties and cultivars of Hoyas, and there are more and more coming out every day. Some of the ones that you may find in your local plant shop would be uh, maybe in the Hoya Carnosa variety. So we have a Hoya Carnosa um, Crimson Queen here. One of the things that we talk about a lot with plants are variegation, and variegation is usually a discoloration or a different color of the leaves, usually a white, a pink, or a cream color. Now this Hoya, the Crimson Queen has that variegation on the outside of the leaves. Um, there's also a Crimson Princess, which is another popular one you might find in your local plant shop. And the Crimson Princess actually has the variegation on the inside of the leaves. I actually don't have one of those in my collection. I can't believe it because it's so popular. Another Hoya Carnosa that's very popular is called the um, Hoya Carnosa Compacta. And as you can see here, it's a, it looks like the Hoya Carnosa, um, just the green variety, but it has these crinkled, kind of amazing, compacted leaves. Very, very um, interesting. It's known as a slow grower, but I will say, and I'll go more into lighting and that kind of thing, I have had great growth on my Hoya Carnosa Compacta. So I have included timestamps in my description below. Now, if you have a specific question that I don't cover during this episode, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you as quickly as possible. You may have also heard of Hoya referred to as a wax plant or a wax flower or wax vine. This is due to the fact that many of these Hoya cultivars are known as having very thick, succulenty, waxy leaves. So first up, talking about lighting. Hoyas are native to tropical areas in Asia and some in Australia, and they're usually epiphytic. Now there are some that are shrubbing Hoyas, but as a general rule, most of them are climbing up trees and as I said, epiphytic. So I recommend giving your Hoya bright indirect light because that's what they would enjoy in their natural habitat. Maybe an east or west facing window. Um, if you have them in a south facing window, maybe a couple of feet back, or if they're closer to the window, maybe a sheer curtain, because a lot of times they can get a little bit burnt on the leaves. But another thing that people really enjoy doing is sun stressing their Hoyas. So sun stressing means that the Hoya gets enough light that the leaves kind of turn a pinky color. I have here a sunrise Hoya, and I recently started giving this Hoya a little bit more light because it's known for having really sunrisey, beautiful colored leaves, and it wasn't putting out leaves that were that beautiful color until recently I can see where the sun's been hitting it's been getting the really pinky leaves but I do recommend giving a little bit more light rather than less light now a lot of Hoyas can survive in lower light but they're not going to thrive they're not going to put out much new growth and they are going to have a really hard time blooming now as I'm coming into winter time none of my Hoyas are blooming they've all kind of just stopped I can tell they're kind of gearing down since we're coming towards the end of the growing season, but I had a ton of blooms this year for the first time, and I learned a lot about getting my Hoyas to bloom, which I'll be talking about in a little bit as well. So if you do end up putting your Hoya in a lower light area, 
just know that you're not going to get a lot of that growth or those blooms, but you could provide them some supplemental lighting in the form of grow lights. There are so, so many fabulous grow lights online. You can't go wrong with any grow light. Uh, your plants will really uh, appreciate any additional light and supplemental light that you can give them in those lower light areas. Depending what zone you live in, a lot of people will put their Hoyas outside during the summer, which they absolutely love. They love that warm weather. They love the higher humidity. They really enjoy getting that good light. I would recommend keeping them out of really direct sunlight. Again, don't expect Hoyas to bloom if they're not given enough light, but if you are giving your Hoya enough light, that's one of the steps that you can take towards helping contribute your Hoyas, having the ideal conditions towards those blooms that a lot of us Hoya lovers really enjoy. As far as temperatures and their natural habitats, they are used to warmer climates. So usually 65 degrees, 70 degrees and above. If you're looking for maximum growth, you know, they will tend to slow down in the winter times and pick back up in the summertime. That's totally fine. As a general rule with houseplants, I say, if you're comfortable in your home, your plants are comfortable in your home. Having that bright indirect light and those warmer temperatures are also going to prevent your soil from staying too damp. Um, because that's one of the things we definitely don't want with Hoyas. We don't want their roots to be sitting in damp soil for an extended period of time. And allowing you know, the warmth and the light to help evaporate the water from the soil um, will be really, really beneficial for your Hoyas. Now, Hoyas absolutely love humidity. They're not dry climate plants. They're warm, humid, tropical plants. So the higher the humidity, the better for these guys. If you're looking for fast growth, humidity is a really, really great way to get there quickly. Sometimes we can have the perfect light, the perfect watering, soil, and we're wondering why isn't our Hoya showing signs of new growth? It's probably because it doesn't have enough humidity. So if you're in the growing months and you're not getting humidity, or if it's in the winter months, a humidifier can really, really help. I would say 60% and above are ideal for Hoyas. Now you're not gonna get the crisping around the outside of the leaves like you might with begonias and those types of plants if they're not getting enough humidity. For Hoyas, you'll see it primarily in the growth. Now, one of the downsides of having a lot of humidity is that there can be fungus that grows on your leaves if you don't have enough airflow. I always have a fan running, as you can see this beautiful Anthurium magnificum leaf is kind of swaying in the breeze with the fan. And the fan really just helps the airflow and it will do a good job of preventing that fungus. One of the things you can do if you are noticing fungus on your leaves, you can spray a bit of neem on there. Next up is watering and it's always really important to know how to correctly water our plants because that's usually the quickest way to kill them is by watering incorrectly. Now with so many of these Hoyas being epiphytic and growing up the sides of trees in their natural habitat, they're used to their roots having a lot of airflow. So we definitely want to make sure that our Hoyas are not left sitting in too much water. A lot of that comes down to using the correct type of soil, which I will be going over in a minute. But when it comes to watering, there's a lot of ways to actually tell if your Hoya is thirsty or not. So the first thing you can do is check to make sure if the soil is dry. Now, some Hoyas do prefer to be watered more regularly and some Hoyas prefer to be dried out for a longer period of time. The first thing you can do to tell is look at the type of leaves that your Hoya has. So if your Hoya has, this is a great general rule of thumb that I use for actually a lot of my tropical plants besides just Hoyas. So if your Hoya has really thick leaves, big, large, succulenty leaves, you probably don't need to water that Hoya as much because it is storing a lot of that water in those leaves. If you have a Hoya that has smaller leaves, maybe a little bit thinner, it doesn't have the opportunity to store as much water and you are going to water that plant more regularly. On some of our larger plants, it can be difficult to tell uh, if there's moisture still halfway down in the soil. So moisture meter really, really, really helps. Another way you can tell if your Hoya is thirsty or not is seeing if the leaves are puckered and dried out. That's a great indicator that your plant is thirsty. It's used up its reservoir of water in the leaves and it's ready for a drink. Now, when it comes to plants, I don't recommend just putting in a little bit of water regularly. I say, let that plant get thirsty. When the plant is thirsty, give it a nice, good drink so that it can replenish those leaves, fill 
the reservoir back up and then wait till it dries out again and is looking thirsty. Another method that you can use is called the taco test. And this method is where you take the Hoya and you try to bend the leaves into a taco. Now this leaf, if I were to bend it into a taco, it would break. And that's because I recently watered all my Hoyas. So they're really um, hydrated right now. But if this leaf was dehydrated, I would have no problems bending that into a taco and it would let me know that the plant is thirsty. One of the things I learned a lot about this year is Hoya blooms. And I can't talk about watering and not discuss Hoya blooms because they really do go hand in hand. One of the surefire ways to get your Hoya to bloom is to stress it out. And when your Hoya thinks it's going to die, it goes into survival mode. And I know it sounds awful, but it goes into survival mo mode. And when it goes into survival mode, it usually wants to put out a flower because it wants to reproduce. So one of the ways we get our plant to go into survival mode is by withholding water. One of the things you can do is wait until the soil completely dries out and then wait a few extra days and then give the plant water. Doing that for a period of time will stress your plant out to the point that it will help expedite blooming. When you see a peduncle, don't withhold water anymore. Water it on a regular schedule um, when the plant would regularly need water uh, because that will help the plant to bloom. If it gets a peduncle and it continues to not get enough water like it has been, it couldn't. It can just drop that peduncle. Next up is soil and repotting. I am actually going to repot a few of these Hoyas. Oh gosh. You know a plant's ready to be repotted when it falls over and no soil comes out because it's all just compacted roots. Let's talk about one of the ways to know if your Hoya needs to be repotted. The roots are coming out the bottom. The roots are coming out the top. I just dropped this plant and no soil came out because it's all compacted roots. Now, typically I would recommend waiting until the growing season or during the summer months or in spring right before the growing season to repot your plants. But the conditions that I keep in this plant room are such that I have a lot of new growth even in the winter months. So I feel comfortable repotting some of these Hoyas. Hoyas really hate sitting in any kind of damp soil. So when you pick a pot, just make sure it has a lot of drainage holes. You just want to make sure that any excess water has every opportunity to flow out of that pot. It's well known I love to use cover pots on this channel. These are some of these fun crazy ones that I have found thrifting. I love to thrift for fun, unique planters. Here's a little like smiley face one. And I like to exchange out different planters based off of what I find when I'm out shopping, but I don't want to repot my plants every time I use a new planter. So I use these really wonderful clear slotted orchid pots from repotme.com, our partner for this episode. Like you can see in this one, I repotted it and I can see on this Hoya curtisii, I can see how the roots are doing. I can see that there is in fact quite a bit of moisture in the soil. Um, it has a ton of drainage. These were made originally for orchids. Repot Me has a ton of amazing products for orchids as well as tropical plants. And so these have a ton of airflow with orchids being epiphytic and growing on the sides of trees. They need a lot of airflow as do Hoyas and so many other tropical plants. Or you could just use a regular nursery pot if you wanted to use cover pots. You can use a little nursery pot as well. I can be really messy when it comes to repotting. So I have this really handy mat that I found on Amazon. And I've linked everything in my description below for anybody uh, if you have any questions about different products that I use. When choosing a pot size, you really only want to go one to two inches bigger than the planter that the plant is already in. Wow. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Look at that. That is amazing. On this particular one, I don't think I can break it up too much because this is really just all roots and the plant is looking really healthy and I don't want to mess it up. It's putting out new growth. So I'm going to go one to two sizes bigger than it has been. So this is a good size. You see the difference there. Well, Hoya being epiphytic, they really love well draining uh, soil that has a lot of either perlite or bark in mixed into the soil. You definitely don't want to use a regular potting mix that can retain a lot of water. And this 
soil has so much good stuff in it already that I don't need to alter it too much. However, through trial and error, I have learned that Hoyas really do love some bark in the soil. So here I have um, classic orchid mix from repotme.com and this stuff is amazing. As you can see, I've almost completely run out. I need to order a little bit more. Now you can absolutely make your own potting mix. If you have a regular bag of potting soil, just use 50% potting soil and then 50% either perlite, pumice, orchid bark is great. You just wanna make sure that the soil is very well draining because their houseplant potting mix already has so much amazing stuff in there, I don't need to add much. I did throw in a little bit of orchid bark. I always look back when I'm editing and I'm so aggressive. Next up is this beautiful Callistophylla. Again, we see the roots coming out the bottom, but this soil isn't as compact. I don't recommend ripping out roots or breaking up the root ball too much, but loosening it up a little bit is also a nice idea. If your plant is looking really healthy, if it's putting out new growth, you know, don't mess with the roots too much. Yeah, so that's the perfect size. A little bit of that. I'm all about eyeballing it. It doesn't have to be exact measurements. So again, Hoya like to be root bound. They don't like a lot of extra room. Um, so, I mean, they typically only need to be repotted like once every couple of years. So make sure whatever you put your Hoya in, that it's the right size, it's the right kind of pot. Hoya are an absolutely terrific plant to propagate, whether you wanna propagate them to give them as gifts for friends or make your Hoya basket um, or pot look more full. Very, very simple, similar to many other tropical plants. You just trim it off at the node and then you stick that node in either some water. Um, have had a lot of su success with that. You can put it in some soil. Uh, if you do that, just make sure the soil doesn't dry out. You definitely want to keep any propagation that you have in soil, keep that soil moist at all times and make sure it gets some good light. Uh, you could also propagate it in sphagnum moss. They do really well in sphagnum moss, uh, perlite. The last subject to mention is fertilizing. These houseplants don't have the opportunity to spread their roots out looking for nutrients in the soil like outdoor plants they really are limited to whatever we give them um, and especially being blooming plants it's really important that we give them enough fertilizer so you can go a few different routes first of all you can never go wrong with any kind of fertilizer labeled for house plants so whether you decide to use a synthetic fertilizer or an organic fertilizer just make sure whenever you start fertilizing usually at the beginning of the growing season that you fertilize at about half strength to start with then just to give your plants a chance to catch up get back in the mood of growing. And then during the growing months, if your plants react well to that fertilizer, then you know go to full strength during the growing months and then taper back off in the fall and then don't fertilize at all during the winter months. Now, if you are seeing new growth on your plants during the winter months, you can continue to fertilize your plant. Just definitely go weak on the fertilizer, maybe half strength, because over fertilizing your plant can cause a lot of problems. It can burn the leaves, burn the roots, damage or potentially even kill your plant. So always err on the side of caution. Also with Hoyas, interestingly, I know a lot of people use orchid fertilizer, whether they spray them on the leaves or on the roots. If you have experience using orchid fertilizer with um, Hoyas, leave it in the comments below. I'm personally really curious to learn more about that. I haven't tried that, um, so I'm not going to go too in depth about it, but I did want to mention it um, because I know that is popular amongst the, the Hoya community to use that. I think that's it on Hoyas. I hope this episode was helpful for you guys. Now, if you wanna be part of our community and you'd like to see future plant videos show up in your newsfeed, make sure to subscribe. And we also have an amazing plant community on Instagram that we'd love for you to be part of. And lastly, huge, huge thank you to repotme.com. They're such a wonderful resource for the plant community. I 10 out of 10 recommend their products. I've included a link in my description to their website and they are offering 10% off their houseplant soils and all of their different soils that they offer for Plant Life with Ashley and Anita viewers. Just use code Ashley. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. You'll definitely be seeing me soon. Bye!